Okay. Bless Good Friday to each of you. I pray that uh, you and your loved ones are well. Uh, I miss uh, everyone. And just wanted to remind you that uh, on Easter Sunday, you can come for private communion, communion in small groups. Uh, I will be doing that outside the sanctuary uh, Sunday from 11 to 2 and from 4 to 6. Uh, <clears throat> let's pray. Gracious Father, on this day that we remember the suffering and death of Jesus, we thank you that all that he did was for us, out of love for us, to pay for our sins, to, to bring us into fellowship with you, and to, to guarantee our life forever in heaven. And so, Lord, despite the sufferings and death of Jesus, we as Christians do confess that this is a Good Friday. Amen. Scripture is from Luke 23, chapter 23, beginning in the 18th verse. And then the crowd cried out at once, saying, Away with this man! Release to us Barabbas, who had been thrown into prison for a certain rebellion made in the city and for murder. Pilate, therefore, wishing to release Jesus, again called out to them, but they shouted even louder, Crucify him! Crucify him! Then he said to them a third time, Why, what evil has he done? I found no reason for death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. But they were insistent, demanding with loud voices that he be crucified. And the voices of the men and the crowd and of the chief priest prevailed. So Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they requested. And he released to them the one that they requested, who for rebellion and murder had been thrown into the prison, but he delivered to them Jesus to their will. Now as they led him away, they laid hold of a certain man, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming from the country. And on Simon they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus. There were also two other criminals led along with him to be put to death. And when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified Him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Since you're not here, I can't ask you any questions. Oh, I guess I could ask, but it would be a while before you could answer. Well, if you were here, and I can't wait for you all to come back, if you were here, I would start with this question. What is the highest dollar-grossing R-rated movie of all time? Now, two recent movies almost made it to number one. American Sniper, a true gripping story of heroism and self-sacrifice. And then more recently, the movie titled Deadpool, a comic character who is totally selfish and an anti-hero. A few things Deadpool does turn out heroic, but he never wanted to do them in the first place. And I think that's kind of a wild contrast between those two movies at the top of the list. But even then, it doesn't compare with their contrast with the number one R-rated movie, which is, of course, The Passion of Christ. The Passion of Christ, Mel Gibson's movie, tells the ultimate story of self-sacrifice. It goes beyond the heroic to the miraculous. And in this, Christ saved mankind. We were saved not by a courageous soldier and not by some comic book hero. You and I were saved by the very Son of God Himself. Thank you, Jesus. I'm sure you've heard the term passion in reference to Jesus' suffering and death. In Latin, the word is passio, P-A-S-S-O, and it means to suffer. In Greek, it's the word pashine, which means to suffer. Now, of course, in today's vernacular, the word passion has come to mean an intense feeling about something or for someone. Shakespeare appears to be the first to have used the word passion in relation to the love for someone else. However, the term the T-H-E 
The Passion has for centuries referred to the sufferings of Christ, especially in relation to Holy Week. From the 12th century on, we find believers doing live reenactments of Christ's suffering, and they're called Passion Plays, plays about Christ's suffering. There were two reasons for wanting to do Passion Plays. One was to emphasize just how real and horrible the actual sufferings of Christ were, and the second is it demonstrates that Christ's sufferings took place in history which therefore can be reenacted. The only passion play that I ever seen have I have excuse me, the only passion play I have ever seen was in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. And its reality, with all the blood everywhere, was too much for our son, who was kind of young at that time, and he just became so sad over that. Gibson's movie The Passion of Christ was an attempt to betray as graphically, as realistically as possible, the horrific sufferings of Jesus. But you know, for over a thousand years, believers responded with tears and distress over the passion of Christ simply through hearing the Word of God, the Word of God written or spoken. There was nothing visual. And the Bible itself includes just the briefest description of Christ's beating and sufferings. It tells us not how many lashes, not what the whip was like, nothing about what it does to a man's flesh. And when it gets to the end, God's Word simply says three little words. They crucified. There are no descriptions of what it felt to hang like to, what it felt like to hang upon the cross. There are no descriptions of all the blood and the horror. There are no long descriptions of the brutal agony of what crucifixion was really like. The Bible does not tell us how many nails, what kind of nails, or what the nails felt like. And yet we have entire books today written by medical doctors or historians attempting to describe in minute detail the physical sufferings felt during the most painful death of Jesus. Thank the Lord there were no camera phones or YouTube back then. But beyond all of that, beyond the suffering as it was portrayed in the passion of Christ, the greatest agony of Jesus was His suffering in spirit. The Bible does not focus on the howl of Jesus' suffering, but it does over and over and over again on why, why Jesus suffered. And I do think Christ's passion is R-rated. And I think as Christians, we should tell everyone that the cross is R-rated. R-rated Not because of what others were doing to Jesus. The cross is R-rated because of what Jesus was doing for us. Follow me here. Through His passion, through His very real sufferings and death, Jesus, one, redeemed us from sin, two, reconciled us with God, and three, He rescued us from death. You know the three R's of education, reading, writing, and arithmetic. These are the three R's of the gospel, the good news we share with the world, that on the cross we have been redeemed from sin, reconciled with God, and rescued from death. Memorize those three R's. That's a good evangelism tool. Somebody ever asks you what the, Christ, what the cross was all about? It means we have been redeemed from sin, bought back by His blood. We have been reconciled with God. We are at peace with God, and we have been rescued from death. And if you didn't get all of that, just pause and rewind your recording. Jesus is our Redeemer. Well, what does that mean? At the time the New Testament was written, the word redeem was a familiar term. It was used in the marketplace 
during the buying and selling of slaves. To redeem a slave was to purchase his or her life. You purchased a living human being, and their life was now in your hands. And that's why Jesus is called our Redeemer, because you and I were born into the slavery of sin. But Jesus has purchased us on the cross, and our life, our life is now in His hands. The second reason the passion of Christ was R-rated is because it has reconciled us with God. The suffering and death of Jesus reconciled you and me with God. To reconcile is to take two individuals or two groups who are separated from one another, alienated from one another, maybe even angry with one another, and reunite them to restore a peaceful relationship. Not only were you and I born into the slavery of sin, but we are born into sin. We are born separated from a holy God. The Bible goes so far as to say we are all enemies of God. But in the passion, in the suffering and death of Jesus, Jesus has reconciled us with God. He has brought us and God back together again. Romans 5.10 says, when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son. 2 Corinthians says, God reconciled us to Himself through Jesus Christ. And you notice here that God is the actor. You and I do absolutely nothing to be made right again with God, but God reconciled us to Himself. He did it through the suffering and death of Jesus. Jesus bought us back from sin, and Jesus brought us back to God. And the last R of the passion of Christ is we are rescued from death. Scripture says the wages or penalty for our sin is death, but Jesus redeemed us from sin, and since our sin is gone, God's no longer angry at us, and so we've been reconciled. Because we are redeemed from sin, because we are reconciled with God, we also have been rescued from death. The New Testament says the sting of death is sin. Death can no longer harm us. Because of the cross, the passion of Jesus, death has simply become a doorway to a new and more wondrous life in glory. The resurrection, that's another R word for you. Resurrection. The resurrection was God's confirmation that, yes, death has been conquered. The suffering and the death of Jesus was truly an R-rated event because it was in His passion that Jesus rescued us from death. Why is the passion of Christ R-rated? Because through His suffering, Jesus was first redeeming us from sin, second, Jesus was reconciling us with God, and third, Jesus was rescuing us from death. Finally, if we are kind of talking about movies like I was in the beginning, what does an R rating stand for? Restricted. It means not everyone is allowed to see it. Some are excluded. But the passion of the Christ, the suffering and death of Jesus, is not restricted. Anyone, everyone is invited. All are invited to the pa passion of Christ to find redemption from sin, reconciliation from God, and rescue from death. All are invited, but do all come? No. Some think the passion of, Jes Je Some think the passion of Jesus is an are ridiculous story. Some are, are repulsed by its violence and blood. Some are just plain rebellious. Some don't think the passion is real. And many, many see no need to repent, to realize, and to recognize they are lost sinners. And it really doesn't matter the reason those who refuse to receive Christ's passion by faith remain in their sin. I call those the anti-R's. However, those who do trust in the passion of Christ are 
regenerated, born into a new relationship with God. We are made righteous simply by trusting the righteous one. We take refuge in the one Scripture calls the rock of our salvation, and we rest our souls in the nail-scarred hands of the root of David, the rod of Jesse, the rose of Sharon, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen.